There goes the snow plow. It's been through here a couple of times, so I think it's trying to clean up the street. Um, I'm sitting at the WTA and I'm waiting for people to show up. We've got a few cars out there and they are traveling around Bellingham and picking up people to bring back to our van so we can take them out to a shelter if they are willing to go. So I'm sitting out here in the snow watching the snow plow, which is across the way there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> At least, at least we've got some some uh, city uh, trucks out there plowing the snow. <clears throat> hey Jim, hey Tarjot, how you guys doing? Um, so I, I think Marcus is out there with Seth and they are they're traveling around in his truck, which is probably the best vehicle out there on these roads right now because they're getting pretty slick. And the other van is out there delivering people over to the shelter right now, so we're just waiting. I'm kind of the the stop point in case we get some people coming in at 8 o'clock. We've been doing this at 8 o'clock on so I'm hoping that there's a few coming in on these buses coming in late here. The buses are running till 9 o'clock so we'll stick it out here at the bus station until about 9 and then uh, we might drive around a little bit downtown and make sure there's nobody that's wanting to get into shelter tonight that's still out there. Love you too Jim. You too. You guys be safe out there on these roads. It's pretty icy. It's pretty slick out there. Um, a minute ago, the snow was coming down like little pellet chunks, sort of like ice chips. So I'm hoping this is the worst of it. We're not going to get much more of this. That would be ideal. Yeah, we've got we've got Marcus out there right now, Jim and Seth. Um, they're coming in with a couple of passengers pretty soon here. So if uh... <laughs> what's that, Charlie? You want to see? What your go-kart will do with this? I Well, yeah, I want to get a sled out there in this. I think B, she was my co-pilot uh, for her first couple runs out there. She uh, She's coming to work tomorrow in her skis, she said. So she she did that last year. She she, she said she's going to ski into work. Um, yeah, no, I haven't seen any city people picking up people, uh, homeless people tonight, Jim. I've, I've had my eyes out looking to see if that's what's going on. The Street Connect could have been here earlier, but I, I didn't see it, so... I missed it if it came through here. Um, yeah, sleet. I would. I was gonna call it sleet, but really, literally, I went in to get a drink from the restaurant across the street to pick up some juice, and when I got inside, my black purse was covered in these little tiny white balls. They were like pellets, literally like little white pellets, ice chips coming down on the on my on the chips um, on my purse. So, yeah, it was. It doesn't look like sleet to me. It looks like it looks like little tiny hail balls. I don't know what you call that. I don't think that's sleet. Sleet's usually like crunchy little ice chips that are flat. These are round little pellets. So, um, but I don't know. I'm 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 not a I'm not a northwesterner. I may have my uh, weather stuff wrong. <laughs> Jim, don't make me laugh. <laughs> Jim says he he heard that maybe the mayor was driving around picking up homeless people. Yeah, you know that was the rumor about an hour ago. But I don't know who started it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure that's what's really going on. I guess we could do a drive-by later to see if anyone's camped outside. Um, we do have a big event happening tomorrow, you guys, if, if you guys want to be out there for this. Uh, we're doing a, some activism out in front of City Hall um, to bring up awareness about homelessness in this winter weather that we're experiencing to get some more action going. And we also are doing a, a donation drive. So if you guys have things you'd like to donate, if you have old camping gear that you don't need anymore, sleeping bags, blankets, tents, uh, heavy duty boots, snow boots, snow clothing, that would be so great. Just just drive it through and um, we'll have some people loading those things up into trucks and vans and cars and stuff to take to a storage so we can distribute that to people that need it. Because there's some people out here that aren't going into the shelter, they choose not to and they're out here in this weather and this conditions out here. So um, we had a couple of people in tents uh, night before last and last night with the high winds, they had, had trees fall down on their tents and we had to replace some of those tents. And so we're looking at this being a consistent uh, weather for at least the duration of this month because it's winter time. So um, if you guys have boots, warm weather gear, I mean, well, warm weather for, warm gear for, for weather that's cold weather, that would be super great. Just come over about 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in front of City Hall is when we'll be active. 
And feel free to use our PayPal account if you'd like to do an immediate donation that's going to have immediate use for, for this particular emergency. Um, you, can, you can send that to pay, the PayPal account for admin at homesnow.org. That's going to help out everyone that's being assisted right now. And we've got multiple people and nonprofits and volunteers and donors throughout our community that are helping with this effort. So it's a good way to do that. <coughs> yes, donate to PayPal at admin at homesnow.org. That's the way to go. So I'm just hanging out here because I got word that Marcus is coming back with Seth, Seth and a few people and um, we'll see if they might just go straight out to the shelter in the truck. I don't know. I haven't heard yet. But uh, if that's the case, then we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and stick it out right here so that if anybody shows up in the next hour or two with these last uh, bus runs out here, I'll be, I'll be sitting and wait to see if they need a ride. If you guys hear about anybody that's out there that needs a ride that wants to go to the shelter, just go ahead and leave me a message here on this on this live stream and and um, I'll make my way or I'll send I'll send that notice out to Dana or or Marcus and they can run out there to pick them up so all right well I'm gonna go ahead and close out a little bit um, I'll check in again soon so yeah just stay stay in our chat threads um, you can PM me um, and uh, we'll go ahead and keep up with this conversation <laughs> but this is it guys look at the snow I mean, we've already got more than an inch on the ground here, and the snowplow's been through here a couple times already. These are cars that were sitting here about an hour ago, and now they're completely covered. I don't know if you can see this, but you, you can't see the vehicles. They've been here for about an hour, and they've got about two inches on them, if, if not more. Um, it's not snowing at present, but it was about 10 minutes ago. Right, Jim saying also, please come to the city council meeting at 6:30 tomorrow. Uh, pretty please with sugar on top. We want we want to we want to talk about what's going on here uh, as far as what this is that we're seeing with this winter weather response and and what we can do to improve it as a city and as a county. Um, we'd like to see some more proactive actions going on with the with with our responsiveness to this weather warming centers. Um, places people can go during during the daytime and nighttime when especially the nighttime when there's extreme weather like this because we live in the Northwest uh, we don't we don't have enough available resources to our public our general public and we'd like to see some improvements on those protocols and how to go about announcing those those uh, making those announcements and bulletins so people know where to go um, it is evident that we have a population out there that's in need and in crisis mode because it is they don't have shelter during weather like this and so it really puts everyone in a, a crunch to help out and we'd like to see our city and county offer more resources for that so if you come out tomorrow at around 6 30 for the city council meeting and make your public comments known that would be super great i i encourage everybody to do that i hope we have a lot of people come out and talk about that What are you saying, Jim? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. If I said something strange, I don't know. I, I honestly, I'm running off of maybe two to three hours sleep. It's been a really long week. We've been going at this since, since Sunday of last week. So it's been seven days straight uh, of all of us coming out together and trying to bring out hand warmers and hot water bottles and whatever we can to help make sure people stay warm out here when it's when it's this nasty. So. Um, I, I, please excuse me if I'm if I'm saying things or tripping over my own words here because I've pretty much I pretty much lost my my sense of steam here. What we not seeing? You mean <laughs> what we're not seeing? Yes, Jim. What we're not seeing? What what, what we're not seeing happen? We want to we want to make sure that we bring to the attention of the city that that there's inaction. There's stuff that we want done. There's stuff that we, we that isn't happening that needs to be done. Yes, the city's lack of action. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> I need you to spell it out for me because my brain is fried. All right, guys. Um, I guess I guess this is it. See, this is this is as much as you get to see here. Okay, <laughs> we're at we're down at down, WTA. I am I'm gonna go ahead and roll up the window and and get, get warm because honestly it's freezing and I'm I don't have the tolerance for the cold to begin with, and uh, this has been a long a long week for us. So. 
Yo, know, I know. I, it's not so much a lack of sleep that's causing I, my driving. I could do in my sleep, literally. But as far as my brain cells, as far as communication skills, I, I may as well be a blithering idiot right now. <laughs> so I have no. But the the coordination and hand eye coordination and all of that for driving, I, I'm stellar. So don't worry, hun. I got. I tried to take a break lot yesterday, and I had some downtime. Unfortunately, Marcus did not. He didn't take the downtime I took. But he's he's a lot more solid than I am. So. He's still out there driving around in this. That's why I'm kind of stationed at WTA right now and have a co-pilot if we're out there. So B did most of the driving this evening and, and I did a little bit when we first started out, but now the roads are pretty slick. So I'm just here at the home base waiting for people that need to come in from the, from the snow and warm up in the van and wait for transportation. Brain, <laughs> yes, my brain cells. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah they're, they're in short supply right now, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I was getting close to 8. It's got to be past 8 o'clock by now. I think we're in the last hour. It's 8.15. It's in the last hour of buses coming through. So if there's any last stragglers that want to get on and go out to, to our shelters out here, this is their chance. Yeah. I don't know, guys. A few businesses are still open, but because it's Sunday, a lot of them are closing about 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock. Fred Myers was closing last time we were out there. We were really fortunate to find a couple people that were out there, though. Um, thanks for, for the word. Uh, thanks to the words of the people that we were picking up, we we found out there were two more people out there at the Fred Meyer, and um, we showed up to find them, and they weren't in the lobby where they, were t where they said they might be. So we made a PA announcement and asking for them by name and they heard the PA announcement and came out to the van. So if you get, if you're out there picking up people, um, you could do that. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Like if you know who you're looking for, you know, uh, it's, it makes it a little bit easier, you know? Um, so, so now because we have word of mouth by, by some of the people and some of the guests that we're bringing in, um, they are letting us know other people that are out there by name and, and, and we're getting to know everybody by name. So this is a this is a positive thing. We're getting to know our neighbors that are out here that are unsheltered right now. And uh, they're really appreciative of the fact that we're trying to do this. And that's what we're dealing with here. I had a conversation today where I, where I was discussing the fact that, you know, we're all at just a few, few paychecks away from possibly being in the same predicament. So this could could really actually technically happen to just about anybody where you're stranded out here on the streets without shelter. So we don't want to have it be that that we don't have fail safes and and actions taking place where people are safe when there's extreme weather. Um, I have my hand, my glove off my hand right now holding this phone and I can't feel my fingers, the ones that are outside this window right now. So uh, it's it's really cold um, and it's supposed to be like this clear till 4 a.m. this morning. So. So everybody stay tucked into your bed, stay warm. If you happen to have four wheel drive and you're out there in it, please take hand warmers and hot water bottles out to people you might see out there on the street walking around trying to stay warm. Um, if you have that, that time and energy tomorrow, we're gonna, need, we're gonna need the same things tomorrow during the day. Um, some of the businesses might be closed due to the snow and people are gonna have to find places to be during the daytime and hopefully there's a few places that are open because they're gonna have to have some place to be while it's snowing out here. I know some of us don't get a paycheck, right, Jim? Uh, I know it's it's it's, uh, it's. Some people have flat flat income, flat rate income coming in, whether they're retired, um, they're off on social security or whatever, and so uh, it's getting difficult to meet the the income bracket for our rent. And a lot of our elderly are being priced out of their homes right now, and that's really that's a hardship because having to move and figure out where to live when you're in your, your golden years is not something people really anticipate or, or know how to do. So I really, I really hope we can find a way to, to manage that and troubleshoot that in some capacity since Washington State doesn't cap its rent. We definitely need to find ways to, to have some protections in place for those of us that, and this is just renters, this is renters and property owners because property owners are facing the same thing with tax increases on their property and with a flat income or flat rate income, they, they can't afford it. So. Uh, <laughs> Drop-in center is open, and this is per the, the mayor. Uh, we 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 are told that the drop-in center in the mission are open, and uh, I, I'm assuming that means that they have not 
uh, reached over capacity. So, you know, if that's the case, then we will do our best to bring people to those two sites. Um, and uh, we have a few alternatives if, that, if that's not going to work for somebody. So, yep, it's, it's like a, a, it's a dead zone out here right now. <laughs> it's pretty quiet. And I'm kind of confused too because we have this this uh, amazing WTA depot, and it provides a lot of shelter from the rain and the weather. It seems like we'd be able to do something in that capacity with maybe three walls with an open face, where it could literally contain groups of people that were outdoors and block the wind and let them have uh, outdoor source of heat of some kind just for extreme weather at the very least because we not only do we see this in the form of snow right now we see this all for a majority of the year about 70 percent of the year at least of rain and rainfall with cold temperatures is is often worse because then you're dealing with pneumonia um, freezing temperatures with rain after your clothes are wet is not a healthy situation to be in when you're outdoors So, uh, yeah, so they have not admitted <laughs> that they are full. Yeah, you know, I don't know what to think about the drop-in center because we went there the other night, and when, when we showed up, uh, we were told that there were no more uh, available spaces left. So we watched about four different people come to the door and, and be turned away. Um, and, and this caused some confusion for us because we were told that if they reached capacity or reached over capacity, they were going to... Uh, contact their supervisor and have overflow in another location so um, that we waited around to see if that actually was going to occur and it did not so um, we, we were told the next day that that was a miscommunication and um, that they were basically not informed at the door the, the staff were uninformed of what to do so I'm assuming that they got all their ducks in a row tonight, so if we have people show up, that they'll be able to manage that. <laughs> There's over 100 people outside of the mission right now. What? What are you saying to me, Taylor? You mean outdoors, like outside of the mission, outside? Just saw post saying there's over a hundred people outside of the mission right now. You mean like indoors, like in using the mission? Or are you saying they're like stranded outside the mission, like they can't go in? Taylor, <laughs> talk to me, hun. Yeah, common sense solutions is all we need, right, Jim? Heaven forbid we make sense. Common sense, take a simple route. Well, Taylor is saying that we, she, she just saw a post saying there's over 100 people outside of the mission right now. I'm not sure if that was a mis, a mistype, if she's saying that, that they actually have over 100 people at the mission right now, or if it's that she's, she's saying that they uh, are standing outside. You know, that would be worth driving by the mission just to make sure there's not 100 people standing outside the mission right now. You saw a post. Um... If you could share that post, really saying, okay, all cold outside the mission, outside the mission. Yes, all cold. Okay, I mean, needing blankets and jackets. Are you kidding me, Taylor? Outside. Well, okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and drive over there because that's just ridiculous if that's what's going on. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, since I'm here on my own... I don't know if Dana's out there, if you guys want to tag Dana and see if he's out there or if Marcus wants to drive by the mission right now to confirm whether there's actually people outside the mission. Public road, yeah. I can either I can either stay put here at the WTA for the duration of people possibly coming off the next buses um, or we can get, if, if we can get Marcus out there or get Dana out there going past the mission to double check this. Tons of people outside the mission. Taylor, are you for real? Is this for real? Can someone con confirm with me too and Taylor that there are people outside the mission right now? Okay, please, yes. Please check the post because I'm curious if it was just their nighttime where they were letting people in and it's possible they were just getting uh, checked in. I can't go in there. No, no, Jim, but I can definitely. <laughs> Apparently, I'm, I am banned. 
Um, cause I wear the Holmes now, uh, uh, tattoo with pride. And I will say that boldly and openly that I, I actually participate in lots of volunteerism for multiple nonprofits in this town. Um, and I actually have my own personal connection to the drop-in center and the mission, I'd say the mission, from years back when I was going to paint a mural for their cafeteria. They have no memory of that, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you're a local artist that's gone rogue. So, um, so basically, I, I don't care. I didn't wear the badge of honor when I was walking around that night. I've just been driving around as a solitary citizen here of Bellingham trying to help out as much as I can. But at this point and at this juncture in our relationship with that particular entity, I would have to say that I am a Holmes Nowy, um, a Holmes Nower. Uh, Charlie says, probably take take me 20 minutes to get there. I don't want anybody to drive out there per se. I'm, I'm trying to confirm if, if by the post that was posted, what hour of the day that was, because it could have been when they were lining up to go in because they usually form a pretty long line to get into the establishment uh, around 8 or 9. If I don't hear back any confirmation that where Marcus is or where Dana is, I can definitely head out there. I'll, I'll just give them a call on this other phone here real quick and see where they're at. Since I have two phones going. All right, we'll give we'll give Marcus a call real quick. I got him on speakerphone. Hey, we want to confirm that there's people outside the drop-in center or not. Um, there was a post apparently that said there were hundreds of people outside the drop-in center, and I'm wondering if that was just when they were were being admitted in or if it's possible that um, there actually are people outside the drop-in center right now and they can't get well, in. They weren't very many uh, out front. There was a bunch out there earlier, and that, that looked like they were definitely doing like a big check-in uh, or right. something. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. So so I won't worry about that. Right. How, that, how far are you guys? Yeah, we're not that worried about. Okay. How far are you guys out from, from being being here? Um, well, why did you need to come back there? No, no. I mean, I didn't know if you were taking the people you picked up straight to the shelter or if you guys were coming back to the WTA. I'm sticking around until 9 o'clock when the buses stop running in case there's a few stragglers that come off the city bus and I'll, I'll just be here until the buses stop running. So... Okay. Alright. Well... Okay. Okay. Right. All right. All right. And is is Dana and are Dana and Rachel um, staying overnight at the sh at the shelter? Are they going to park the van and go ahead and stay out there? Or are they coming back into town? Do you know? Yeah, I don't know if that was their last run or not. So if that was their last run, then that's then I'm the only one left out here. That's okay. Um, okay, cool. So I'm gonna just stick it out here, probably until the buses stop running. And uh, if there's anybody I see wandering about after this business is all closed downtown, if you want to touch base with me, just give me a call later. Okay. I'll be at WTA. Okay, sounds good. All right, we'll give you a heads up if I hear anything. <laughs> okay, I'm on social media right now. Uh, we'll do. All right, talk to you soon. Okay, love, uh, love you too. Bye. Bye. All right, so Marcus confirmed that uh, he drove by there earlier and there was a line, and then when they drove by a second time, there wasn't. So I'm thinking what happened was people were lined up to go inside because that line can get pretty pretty extensive when they're checking people in. So it's, chances are somebody was was driving through there uh, right when the... Uh, well, that's not one of our white vans. <laughs> that's a different white van. I did that earlier tonight. I'm sorry I got distracted here. When I was coming out of Fred Meyer um, after looking for the couple that we were looking for in the lobby, um, I came and there was a white van that looked identical to our van and I went running after it thinking it was V because she they had pulled around the corner and then I realized it didn't have our license plate and I turned around and she was on the other side. <laughs> so 
I was like, I get to the van and I'm like, hey girl, I almost got in the wrong white van. That would have been a disaster. So <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it looks like that the people that were standing outside the uh, the DIC were, have already been admitted. So that is something we could do though, is just run through there and make sure there's nobody that's wandering about that tried to get in and couldn't get in and make sure that they have some hand warmers and some blankets. Um, I think most, I think Dana and uh, Rachel are probably in for the night. Um, Marcus and Seth are still driving around out there. They said if you guys have any any information that you know of, they can go out to whatever location that is to to see see it out. So, um, yeah, I could I could come by or or Marcus could come by for the hand warmers. I'll give him a heads up. I'll give him a text that you've got hand warmers, Jim, over at, at Winter Haven, and uh, we've got some in the truck or in the in. Well, he's got some in the truck unless he's handed them all out, and I've got a few left here at the at the van. So. Let me give him a quick, I'll give him a quick text. Uh, Jim has hand warmers. All right. There's still people driving around out here. I think we went through all our hot water bottles. That's another thing, guys. Um, this this cold weather front is going to be here for a little while. I think it's probably going to stick out. It might not be as severe as it is right now um, after the next couple weeks, but it's going to be cold uh, probably clear into the next couple months. And so there's still going to be people that are needing needing shelter and needing uh, shelter from the from the weather in this in this cold weather. So. We're looking at uh, collecting water bottles, uh, Pepsi bottles, water bottles, the bottles that are thick plastic with a thick lids that twist really tight, really well, and stay together really, really well when you put water in them. If you could find those and keep those when you're using them, or if you're if you're dumping your recycling and you happen to see a couple of bottles, grab those up and put them in a plastic bag or put them in a container. Um, we're collecting those, so the more we can get, the better. Um, my daughter and her friend, um, there are a couple of Wacom students. They they spent an evening, just one hour of their evening uh, on a school night. They went into their car and grabbed a couple garbage bags that went up and down the streets to all the local apartment complexes and, and were able to retrieve quite a few uh, bottles. And and so that's something we are, we're doing. <laughs> we're literally digging through recycling and grabbing up the bottles that, that fit this description, cleaning them out in our bathtubs and filling them with hot water. And then when you take those hot water bottles, you can put them into a uh, one of those silver insulated bags or into a cooler with hot water in it um, and then you can travel around with those and hand them out to people and warm them up so it's it's kind of a lifesaver you can stick it on the sleeping bag and it'll keep you warm through the night so if you are if you're out there that's something that really helps us too because we go through them pretty quickly it's almost, it's almost every night we've been doing this and so uh, collect your collect your plastic bottles please even the big leader ones um, we'll take anything and just collect them in a plastic bin and drop them off at one of our donation sites and, and that would be super great. Uh, got a few people commenting. We only have one out there, Krista, right now. It's just Marcus and Seth because uh, it's, it's pretty tricky out there on the road. So they've got the big truck with the four wheel drive out there right now. So if you need if you need someone to pick someone up out there right now, it's, it's Marcus you want to tag or Seth that you want to tag. Um, and I, if you if you say something here, I can give them the message. So that that works too. Um, thank you, Carol. She's gonna have some bottles to drop off. Awesome. And you know, feel free to make a make a a, a post about collecting bottles at, on your own page and share that with friends and family and get them involved with that too. Because because like I said, we're doing this on a daily basis and we run out pretty quick. So. Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, chat earlier tonight, Charlie, we did have three out there. Um, we had, uh, I think, two cars and one truck. So now we're down to one truck, and everyone's pretty much gone inside that, that you know, because of the weather. So it's, it's getting pretty icy out there on the roads. I don't know. I don't know, Krista. That's possible. There may be some people out there doing this without my knowledge. I haven't checked back on our feet in a few, so it's possible there's a couple more out there. Um, I'm only aware of Marcus and Seth, and the two that I was aware of from earlier tonight have already gone in, so. And now it's about 8.30, so we've got about a half hour here <laughs> sitting in the cold. 
I'm going to go ahead and turn the engine off because I think the car is pretty warm and we'll go ahead and roll this up here so you guys can just look through my crazy glass here and I'll turn the windshield wipers off. I guess I can turn everything off. Open this up here. Shut that off. And the lights. And so yeah, even these work. Here's, um, I'll turn on my overhead. Uh, I've got a Sobe right now. So this is a plastic bottle. I had a lot of these because my daughter drinks these at school. And so um, this is another another kind of plastic bottle that works really well. Anything that's got the harder plastic and a really strong twist tight twist type lid right here at the top where it really secures um, when you fill it up with water or any other substance because we don't want the water bottles to best the bottles that that turn inward when you squeeze them those are too flimsy and usually they have really short lids and and those will break apart really easily and then somebody's all wet we don't want that to happen so definitely want to collect the bottles that are um pl uh, tougher plastic tougher lids i don't know how many more buses are coming in this is um this is a slow, this is a slow evening, but I am happy to see that the buses are still running. We had a full house earlier. The first load that we took out to the, to the shelter location was, um, a packed bus and they had a lot of stuff. There were a couple people from last night that were able to get into a hotel tonight, today with friends and family helping them out. So that was, that was good. Um, I think people are beginning to realize just, just how cold it is up here and doing what they can to help each other out. Thank you to all our donors who are helping that, that also, uh, you know, earlier in the week before we knew how weather, how bad the weather was going to be, but we knew it was already bad starting Sunday. We had a lot of donors step up, up and help us get, um, a ton of people into hotels. And so that was really great. We were really grateful for that effort because, there was quite a few people out there that have um, discomfort with our local shelter, and, and they and they weren't going to come in off the street. So we wanted to make sure they they were safe and off the street when it was extremely cold, cold weather. So and um, so we thank you for the donors who have sponsored the people that are in hotels right now. Now I'm kind of trying to assess whether this. The people being dropped off are just students with backpacks or people that need a place to stay for the night. It's kind of hard up here, guys, because we all kind of bundle up during this time of the year and we wear lots of lots of warm clothes and we all have backpacks or purses that are big and wander around downtown, you know, uh, staggering through this weather. And so uh, we all just look like a bunch of bundled up people out here on the roads when we're out here. But I imagine that there's probably not a, not a whole bunch of people out there at this hour that would want to be out here right now. So I've seen some people doing snowball fights and that kind of thing. So I've seen kids playing and enjoying the sun, the snow. But uh, you know, I'm I'm actually looking for people that look like they're carrying their entire life on their shoulders, and that they've been doing it for a while. And that's quite the difference. Um, so. All right, I guess I'm going to go ahead and just plug back into our chat lines and make sure that, you know, whoever's out there right now, if they've got any more uh, uh, information about people out there and you feel, you guys feel free to let people know that there is a van at the WTA stationed at the WTA for pickups to a shelter. Um, I can take them to the drop-in center or I can take them um, to our other location if that's necessary, case by case. So um, just let them know that we do have a white van at the WTA. I will probably be here till about, I'm at least until nine o'clock. Um, but until the bus, until the last bus comes through here is probably when I'll, I'll stick it out. So probably nine fifteen or nine thirty. Um, so unless I get orders to do something else. So just let people know that there's a white van here at the WTA. If there's, if you find out that there's someone waiting to, uh, get to a shelter in this area, they can come here and I'll be here. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. Please stay warm. Please stay safe. Bye.